Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna make two projects that would be really great for yourself or for gifts. We're gonna be using transfer film from Tomato Ink. They're our sponsor today. And not only do they offer transfer film for both light and dark fabrics, they also offer ink cartridges that have been remanufactured that are a lot cheaper than the ones that you can get at the office supply store, but they still work great. And they have cartridges for almost every printer you can imagine. So go check them out if you're tired of paying too much money for your ink cartridges. Now, what I really love about Tomato Ink is they are a sustainable company. So with that um, thought, I wanted to make a project that would help me be more sustainable. So I like to go to farmer's markets in the summer, but a lot of times I don't plan. I just kind of see one and pull over and go. And so I'm not prepared. So I decided that I wanted to make a produce bag to keep in my car, but I wanted it to be a little bit different than the other reusable bags that I use. Most of them are a little more squat and wide. And I find that when I put um, like, you know, you know, greens or lettuces or celeries, things that are long, they want to just kind of flop over. Um, they're not supported and they tip over in my car. So I made a taller bag that was also gusseted at the bottom so it would be very roomy and I would be able to hold lots of good produce in there and I could definitely get a full farmer's market trip in this bag and everything would be protected until I got it home because you don't want to get the, your things bruised up or rolling around in your car. That gusseted bottom is going to keep it well. And, um, and that's, you know, if you can eat all the food that you buy and it doesn't go to waste because it gets bruises on it and it rots, then that's all the better. Now the other project I think would be a really awesome gift. This would be a great gift too, but this other one I think is nice because um, you can really go with anybody's sense of style. Now I love vintage labels and I found this vintage perfume label on the Graphics Fairy website. I'll put a link to that too in the video description and I printed it on the inkjet film and then put it on canvas and stretched it on a frame and I think that would be such pretty decor for my bathroom. You could do more vintage uh, fruit crate labels and put them in your kitchen. There's a lot of different things you can do and it only takes minutes to make a thoughtful gift like this. So without further ado, let's go to the table. I'm going to show you how to make both of these projects. We're going to start with the stretched canvas project first. Now you're going to need a heat resistant surface to do your ironing on. You could use an ironing board or I put a Teflon mat on my uh, table and you're also going to need to print your image onto some transfer film, which I've already done. Now I have text on this image, so I had to print it in reverse and this is how you do that. You open up your picture in whatever uh, photo editing software you have, click on image and then choose mirror and they're all going to be very similar. So no matter what you're using for software, it's going to be pretty much the same. Then I'm just going to print it, set it for landscape, and print on the normal setting. You don't need to do anything fancy, and it's going to be fine. And here I'll show you how I reverse these two. Same deal. Go to image, pick mirror, and it flips it around. So you'll need to do that for any transfer that you're using on light film that has text on it. After you've printed it out, you need to trim away any of the border on your image so that you don't have um, excess film being ironed. It will take longer and it will be kind of a pain. And there you can see that's all done. And now what we need to do is iron it in the center of this piece of canvas. You could use any light fabric for this. It doesn't have to be canvas, but I already had it. So I figured it would be perfect. So you could also use this if you like to paint and you could transfer a, a photograph and then you could paint over it too on the canvas. So that would be kind of fun. Now the ironing takes a long time. It's going to take you four minutes with a household iron on hot to get this image to transfer. So keep that in mind. If you have a heat um, press machine, you can do it in like 20 seconds, but I don't. And I figured probably most of you don't either. So you just want to make sure you iron it for the full four minutes. Start by ironing gently. And as you go along, you're going to give more pressure and you want to put extra pressure on the sides of the paper to make sure it sticks down really well. After the four minutes is done, you can gently pull, pull up one of the corners and peek underneath and see how the transfer is coming along. This should be a sufficient amount of time, but um, sometimes it's not and you have to iron it more. One time my iron actually shut off because I had been using it for so long and I didn't realize it when I was ironing, so I had to redo the process because it had shut off and cooled off on me. If you find that your transfer film is hard to remove or you're seeing that too much is still on the transfer paper, you can go back in and iron over those areas but you're honestly better off to do like an extra minute at the beginning before you peel off the uh, film than to go back in and iron but uh, that's what you can do in case the transfer is not complete. I wanted to let you know also that um, on all of my iron-ons that I did, there was always a little bit of residue on the transfer paper when I was done. I think if you used a heat press, you'd probably get a more consistent result, but I thought it looked really good and I was really pleased with how it came out and the fact that I could do it with the supplies I already had in my home. 
We're going to stretch this canvas the way you would for any sort of canvas you want to stretch. So it's a really great uh, technique to know because sometimes you want to make your own stretch canvases. So what you want to do is um, while the fabric is facing you and you have it over the stretcher frame, and you could use any wooden frame for this, uh, you want to center up your image as best as you can. And this is a 9 by 12 uh, stretcher bar and I've got about uh, 8 by 10 or well, 8 and a half by 10 image there. So what I'm doing is um, flipping it over and I am going to start by stapling down one edge. So you don't want to pull too much on this first one because you, you don't want to kind of pull it askew. Then you're gently going to pull on the opposite side and you're going to put down a staple there. So when you start off you want to be gentle and then as you go further along you'll give it a little more pressure. Now I'm flipping it back over to check that I haven't made anything crooked which it looks pretty good and now I'm going to do the two sides and again I'm going to put a staple in the middle of each side. After that you just want to kind of fill in around with more staples so I'm going to do um, the two edges on the short side then do the exact same thing on the opposite side of the frame. As long as you work on opposites it will uh, give you an even tension all the way through. When it comes time to do the corners, I just try to uh, staple things in so they're snug and then fold in that loose fabric and staple it down so it doesn't stick out or push the frame against the wall. But um, you may have a neater way to do corners and if so, then you go ahead and do it however you like. Then all I would do is add a wire to the back of that and hang it on my wall. The tote bag is very simple to make. You just need two pieces of fabric, one large rectangle for the body and two smaller rectangles for the handles. And you can customize that to whatever size you like. So I folded the big piece of fabric, which was 18 inches wide and about 48 inches long in half. And now starting at the fold side on my sewing machine, I'm gonna sew up each of the sides and leave the top open. Make sure to backstitch when you start your um, sewing of the sides so that way these, the threads won't pull out if you're using a machine to sew. Once you've sewed up the side seams, you're going to have something that looks like a big pillowcase. Then you want to turn over that open edge twice so you get a nice place to hem and you're going to press that over on your ironing board with your iron. That's going to make the sewing a lot easier. Then if your machine has a removable arm area, you want to take that off so that you can use kind of the um, free arm of your machine. And then you're just going to go around um, in one go and stitch down that turned over hem and that's going to add strength to your bag and also keep it from fraying when you use it. You can leave your bag thin and flat if you like, but I wanted to have a flat bottom gusseted bag. So what you need to do in that event is while the bag is inside out, you want to stitch across the um, bottom of the bag where the points are. So what I had determined was how wide I wanted the bottom of my bag and that's what I'm going to sew across on this kind of bottom flap area. So you flatten out the bottom of your bag and you're going to see almost like two triangles on each side. You just stitch across those triangles, try to keep it even at both sides and that way you'll have a nice rectangle square flat bottom bag. And um, I think it'll be a little bit clearer when you see this or if you have any tote bags and you look at them, um, you're going to see what I mean about the uh, the flat gussets there. There are several ways to make handles. You can even buy material already made, but what I like to do for stiff fabric like canvas is to uh, fold over one edge, about a quarter of an inch, and press it down. And then what I like to do is fold over the opposite side and press that down. And that's gonna be the width of my handle, the second piece that I'm ironing there. And then I'm gonna fold over that finished edge that I had just ironed and I'm gonna press that down. So all I have to do is make a stitch down the center pretty much to tack those pieces together. Now you also want to make sure your ends aren't going to fray, so I am going to iron down a quarter of an inch on each end of the handle, so that way when I go and stitch everything together on my sewing machine, you'll see in a second, everything will be nice and finished. Back at the sewing machine here, I'm just going to stitch across the end to make sure that's locked down. Then I'm just going to pivot my fabric and I'm going to stitch down that center seam and that's going to lock down all of those layers so that I don't have to worry about any fraying when I go to wash this or use this. And um, when I get to the end here, I'm simply going to lock down the other end. Now, of course, you need to make two of these for your... Um, uh, for your bag so that you can have your weight distributed when you are using it. But uh, that's a great easy way to make a handle for a fabric that's stiff like denim or a canvas. 
And now all you have to do is sew them to that hemmed edge of the bag. So we have that nice sturdy edge because we folded it over twice and sewed it. That's a great place to attach your handle. What I usually do is just kind of sew it in a box and then an X in the center. And that gives me a really secure foundation. Then all you have to do is turn your bag right side out and iron on your decals. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could just buy raw canvas bags that have no printing on them and just do the iron on decals. That would be a quick way to make a bunch of these up if you don't feel like sewing. I want to thank our sponsor, Tomato Inc. They offer inexpensive, high quality, environmentally friendly products. By packaging ink and remanufactured cartridges, tomatoink.com passes along substantial financial and environmental savings to you. Their products give the same vibrant, high quality results you expect from the name brands, but at prices up to 80% less. It would be easy to consider their use of recycled cartridges a job well done, but they go one step further and help replenish diminishing natural resources through their One Tree Planted part. Partnership. Every purchase at tomatoink.com currently allows one tree planted to plant two more trees in Honduras. I want to thank you so much for watching today. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this project. And until next time, happy crafting!